Hi everyone, it's nice to see those who are physics and math. Let's talk today about the quadratic equations. And quadratics are the equations with one variable that have the highest degree of this variable, 2. Okay, so the highest x is x squared. The highest degree of x is x squared. And there are several uh, the ways to write this kind of equation or formula and there are several ways to solve them as well and we could also say that there are a few types there are kind of incomplete quadratics and there are complete quadratics and watching this video you'll get all this stuff so let us start from the incomplete ones okay if i write here the following equation like mm -hmm. x squared is equal to 16 for example is it quadratic it is variable x is the only one and the highest degree is 2x squared. One way to solve it is just to say, okay, let's take square roots of both sides. That's fine, but a bit tricky way. So root of x squared is equal to root of 16. To make it safe, we should remember that square root of x squared is not x. Square root of x squared is absolute value of x. If you do remember this, you are safe. So root of x is equal to 4, which brings us to the conclusion that x is equal to plus or minus 4, positive or negative. Both are the roots, okay? Both are the roots. Then, if we take a different perspective and we'll say, let us move 16 to the left-hand side, what we'll get? x squared minus 16 is equal to zero and with this approach it's even more safe since we could rewrite it using the special algebra expansions as the difference of squares as x minus 4 times x plus 4. If this is equal to zero obviously there are two roots we can use the zero product property which says that either of the factors could be equal to zero and either x is equal to four or x is equal to negative four in many cases we write these sub numbers x1 or x sub one is equal to four x sub two is equal to negative four that's how we could deal with this type incomplete quadratic equation there is another type of incomplete quadratic equation which contains x squared and just x to the first power. Let me give you an example as follows. So let's say 5x squared plus 10x equals to 0. Okay, again. What could we do? If we could notice some of common factors, we could factor them out here. Yeah? 5 is common factor and x is common factor here. So 5x times x plus 2 is equal to 0 and then again zero product property yeah so either we have x equal to 0 let's say x1 x sub 1 or with x sub 2 which is equal to negative 2 the whole expression is also left hand side i mean is also equal to 0 we've solved it Two roots of the first equation, x is 4 and x is negative 4. Two roots of the second equation, x is 0, x is negative 2. Okay, this is quite simple, I believe. Let us go to some other cases. And let us talk now about the complete ones. So, so far we're talking about incomplete, but what is the complete quadratic equation? Complete quadratic equation has all three options of x exponent of x powers let me write it as follows a x squared plus b x to the first power plus c or c to the times x to the zero power same thing is equal to zero okay three terms of the equation highest uh, degree of x is two 
okay? This is quadratic equation or quadratic formula. We could solve either one, any one, by the quadratic roots formula, which is here. x1 or x sub 1, if you like, is equal to negative b minus root b squared minus 4ac multiplication of coefficients it's a fraction divided by 2a okay this is the first root second root x2 is equal to the same fraction almost maybe different again negative b plus square root b squared minus 4ac things and the root are the same and over 2a again that's basically it but since we see that b squared minus 4ac is being repeated and furthermore it has some significance and because it shows us either roots exist in real numbers or not so if we could think of something negative under the square root we would say oh this root does not exist at least in real numbers and we are starting basically while learning the whole process we're starting with real numbers first again okay? and i would write that this expression under the radical is often mentioned as discriminant or d we don't know who does it discriminate but probably it discriminates us if we cannot find it. Okay, it mocks us. Uh, B squared minus 4ac. If discriminant is positive, then square root could be taken, could be calculated in real numbers, and there are two roots. If discriminant is zero, means plus root minus root is the same, and we'll have two doubled roots, which are the same, congruent, or just we could say one root. If discriminant is less than zero, then no roots in real numbers exist. Okay, that's why the D concept helps us to analyze quadratic equations, uh, quadratic functions, and their graphs as well. But it would be in some other next videos, not now. Let me write an equation as follows x squared minus 5x okay plus 4 equals to 0. I would say that by this formula of the roots you could solve any equation complete incomplete whichever with good coefficients a b c with bad coefficients a b c with irrational coefficients even but there are of course other ways and we'll talk about them in future uh, which are easier than this roots of quadratic equations form but let's start with this one because it's universal you could apply it everywhere now let me write uh, maybe first of all let's talk about what are these coefficients and sometimes i warn you um students make very kind of silly mistake if we ask them what is a coefficient in this inside of this equation quite many of them say zero because they don't see it but it's a coefficient it's being multiplied by x squared and if product exists it's non-zero but coefficient does not exist or does or it's not seen let's say yeah that means that this coefficient is one the only coefficient which we do not kind of use or write is one why should you write one times x squared we don't but it is one okay a is one so here we have just one and we'll say that a is equal to one then we consider the sign b here is negative five okay and c is equal to four let's just substitute those coefficients into the equations formula roots formula i mean and let's see what would happen x1 is equal to negative b negative negative 5 please never forget about it again many 
mistakes are done just because of using or misusing positivity and negativity signs. Negative negative five, it would be positive five as a result. Minus square root b squared minus five squared would be same as five squared, but I would still write it to be fair. Minus four times one times four. Okay. Divided by two times one. What will get? Five minus root of 25 minus 16 is 9, root of 9, divided by 2. Root of 9 is 3, 5 minus 3 is 2, 2 by 2 is 1. Here is the first root. You've solved the first quadratic equation using the roots formula. And x sub 2 would be same, negative, negative 5 first, but then plus this root. Again, I'll write everything minus 5 squared minus 4 times 1 times 4 divided by 2 1 uh, 2 times 1 sorry and we'll get again 5 plus root of 9 which is 5 plus 3 over 2 which is 8 over 2 and it's 4 that's it that's how we solve quadratic equations and in future videos I'll share more cases of solving equations, various types of them, with nice roots, <laughs> integer roots, irrational roots, whichever, okay? And we'll talk about more types and shapes of quadratic equation itself. This form, ax squared plus bx plus c, is often called standard form, okay? And there are other ones. We'll learn all of them step by step. So we have here, let's see x1 x sub 1 is equal to 1 and x sub 2 is equal to 4. That's what we usually do solving quadratic equations. That's it for now. Thank you for your interest being here with us and if you have any questions about quadratics and about anything in math and physics, actually, I would be happy to hear you. Please type, please write. If uh, you like this video in general, please press like and subscribe. We'll have a lot more in future. At this point, I would finalize our first small lesson and I would wish you all possible success in your studies, in your exams, in your tests, and please enjoy math and physics. See you 